Hey there, you boob, it's me, it's Uncle Murray. Well, it's come out in the news that some fella that works in the government sent out an invitation to a Christmas party, but only to people with certain kinds of skin colors. And that if you ain't them colors, then you ain't invited. Uh, hey, when I recorded this, I referred to the person that sent in the invitation as a fella, but I got that wrong. It was a dame, you know, it was a lady. So when you hear me referring to some fella, just replace it with me saying some lady instead. Okay, okay, sorry about that. Then uh, I, I return you to the previously scheduled program. <laughs> well, Mr. Matt Walsh over at the Daily Wire talked about this on his show for about 10 minutes. Fox News has this report. Boston's Democratic mayor has come under fire after she sent out invitations for a holiday party intended only for minority city councilors. Michelle Wu, the city's first Asian American mayor, recently had her aide send out an email for the event. Email said, honorable members, on behalf of M Mayor Michelle Wu, I cordially invite you, to, uh, you and a guest to the electeds of color holiday party. The invitation was meant only for the uh, city's six counselors of color. 15 minutes after the email was sent out, DeSantos apologized and clarified that the invitation was only meant for minority city counselors. So just to be clear, she was not apologizing for having a racially segregated holiday party where whites were not invited. She was only <laughs> apologizing for sending them the invitation. The apology was, oh, sorry, you, you white devils weren't supposed to get that. Apo apologies. Uh, DeSantis said, I wanted to apologize for my previous email regarding a holiday party for tomorrow. I did send that to everyone by accident. I apologize if my email may have offended or came across as so. Sorry for any confu confusion this may have caused. He spends two and a half minutes complaining about a made up word that they used. This is not the most outrageous aspect here, obviously, but I, I, you know, I can't quite move past the phrase electeds of color. You know, that's the most offensive thing about this to me, even more than the racism. Electeds of color. Like what is, nobody speaks like that. They're hamstrung by the fact that they insist on speaking in ways that no human being actually speaks. You know, Democrat politicians like Hillary, they use phrases and words that normal people never use, they make up, they invent their own language, electeds of color. Like if you were talking to a normal person and they said, yeah, I was, I was out at the uh, state capitol yesterday and I saw some electeds of color walk by. You'd say, what? What? You saw what? A, ooh, what? Then he spends another two minutes talking about what would have happened if the roles was flippy floppied. You know, in these situations, we always say, imagine if the roles were reversed. That if the situation was reversed, there would be a volcanic explosion of outrage. Like you can't imagine. If anyone, especially if any government office or politician had a holiday party for whites only, there would be a nuclear like detonation of, of anger. We, we cannot fathom the level of, of indignation. There would be people self-immolating in the street over this. There would be congressional hearings and FBI investigations. And MSNBC anchors would be weeping on air. They'd be like rich, they'd be like committing ritualistic Harry Carey or something on air in protest of, of this. I mean, you, you can't even, you really, you cannot, whatever you imagine would be the reaction, it's, it's, it'd be a thousand times that. And then compare that to the reaction in the reverse, and the most you get is one guy going, that's unfortunate. But we can complain about the double standards all day. It doesn't matter. So he complains about the double standard, but then he says complaining about it don't matter. <laughs> but then he says that people need to respond. But first he says what people shouldn't do. We need to be the ones who respond appropriately to things like this. We don't need to weep and set things on fire the way the left does. We don't need to go and loot some random business that has nothing to do with it. So that's good, right? Since it might be real tempting for some people to act out and to burn stuff and, and steal stuff and get violent, that people shouldn't do that. So that's a good thing that he said not to do them things. But what does he tell you is that you should do about it? How does he say that you should respond? We need to be the ones who are actually as angry and outraged as we should be. The mayor's office saying no white people can come to my holiday party is the kind of thing that deserves outrage. It is, is outrageous and infuriating. And that's how we should respond to it. It needs to come from us. So what's he asking you to do? Be angry, be outraged. He says, respond by feeling a real negative feeling. Be angry. Well, okay, so you feel angry. Now what? What's feeling angry about it going to do? He does come kind of close to actually telling you something that you just can do. We need to call it what, this is anti-white racism. This is bigotry and race. This is not reverse racism either. This is just racism, just straight up racism against white people. And it is unacceptable and, and outrageous. There should be an investigation into this person. So we need to be the ones who react that way. We can't wait around for the left to do it. Call it out. 
Somebody should investigate this fella. So, okay, so, but what does he tell you that you should do? He don't tell you. So, what can you do? Well, you could write a letter or an email or something to that fella or to your congressman or to the White House or something telling them your thoughts about it. Or uh, you could not vote for him the next time and vote for somebody else. But he don't tell you to do none of that. He just tells you to feel outraged and infuriated and angry. But what's that going to do, huh? Sure, some guy in the government is excluding people that don't got certain skin colors. Well, that's a nasty thing to do. But lots of people do nasty things. It happens all the time. Sometimes you do nasty things. Sometimes I do nasty things. And when I do something wrong, when I do something nasty, I try to apologize for it. And when people do something nasty to you, maybe they apologize for it, maybe they don't. But whether they do or they don't, we can't control that. What are we going to do? Are we going to chase everybody around that's ever done something wrong to anybody and demand an apology from them or, or demand that they all get investigated and lose their jobs? And in the meantime, just be angry, angry, angry at everybody? Well, I don't know about you, but I don't want to live like that. So you just can do what you just can do. If it's somebody in the government, write a letter, make a phone call, or cast a vote. If it's somebody that you come in contact with, talk with them, have a conversation. If you can, wait until you ain't all worked up and angry. Because I don't know about you, but I ain't so good at talking through stuff when I'm all hot-headed. You know what else you can do? You can pray. Yeah. You can pray for them, and you can pray for yourself, too. You know, pray that uh, God would open their eyes and their ears and soften their hearts. Pray for God to give you patience and wisdom and understanding. You ever hear the serenity prayer? It goes like this. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Because ultimately, we can't control what other people do, and there's going to be times that people do stuff that makes you mad and you might not be able to do nothing about it. And, you know, there's people in the government and people in the news and there's political and social commentators that want you to pick a side and then be angry with everybody that ain't on your side and to just mock them and ridicule them and hate them. But we don't got to do that. We can control how we treat each other. We can be kind to each other and we can forgive each other, even if people ain't kind to us and don't forgive us. You know, that's one of the things that Jesus talks about. But I say unto you which hear... Love your enemies, do good to them which hate you. Bless them that curse you, and pray for them which despitefully use you. And unto him that smiteth thee on the one cheek, offer also the other. And him that taketh away thy cloak, forbid not to take thy coat also. Give to every man that asketh of thee. And of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. And as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. For if ye love them which love you, what thank have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. And if ye do good to them which do good to you, what thank have ye? For sinners also do even the same. And if ye lend to them of whom ye hope to receive, what thank have ye? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. Now that don't mean to just let people get away with doing anything they want without no consequences. No, there's a time and a place and a way to hold people accountable. And if they break the law, then you let the law take care of it. But we ain't supposed to want to get even and to seek revenge and to hold a grudge against people. We're supposed to forgive them and to love them. Because if God forgives us for the nasty things that we do to him, well, then we're supposed to forgive people when they do nasty things to us. And forgiving people ain't just for their sake, it's for our own sakes too. You know, there's a saying that says that uh, resenting somebody and holding a grudge against somebody is, is like eating poison pellets and expecting the other person to die. <laughs> and another thing is that a lot of times the people that you're all bent out of shape about, they either don't know or don't care. Yeah, you could be walking around feeling all angry and miserable, and them other people don't know nothing about it. So responding to something nasty that other people are doing just by feeling angry about it for the sake of being angry, that ain't going to change a thing. Just leave us alone. Well, I'm not going to leave you alone. I want you to get mad. I don't want you to protest. I don't want you to riot. I don't want you to write to your congressman because I wouldn't know what to tell you to write. All I know is that first, you've got to get mad. I want all of you to get up out of your chairs. I want you to get up right now and go to the window. 
open it and stick your head out and yell, I'm as mad as hell and I'm not going to take this anymore. I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. I'm mad as hell. I'm not going to take it anymore. I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. I'm Well, what did that accomplish? Nothing. So the guy with the Christmas party invitations, was it a lousy thing to do? Yeah, it was lousy. So if you want to send the guy a letter, send him a letter. And don't be nasty about it, but then let it go. And get back to the business of forgiving people and loving them. Especially the people that ain't so easy to love. Okay, well, so that's it and that's all. And I'll talk to you later, okay? Okay, bye-bye.